he's not supposed to be playing with the coconuts. Turbo, you know, you're not, that's not for you. Did you lose it? Where'd it go? <laughs> you just hide behind that single leaf. I'm not gonna see ya. Hey, you know better. You're not supposed to play with those. And you got eye boogies. Got the camera out, get yourself together. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great sitting outside. It is a beautiful day. Did he just, did he have a coconut in his mouth? March garden tour, kinda. It's actually April. So the last several days of March, it was just unbelievably windy and cold and gloomy. So I figured I'd just wait until it was nicer out and we're finally here. So the video won't be out till April 5th. Doesn't really make that much of a difference as far as just the month of March is concerned because not a lot happened out here. The March garden tour, as you're about to see, is going to be basically a whole bunch of what the hell happened and what are we gonna do about it? It was a rough winter, so there isn't even that much to talk about. Just me walking around, pointing out what isn't doing well, some potential plans for the year, and that's about it. I haven't really gotten around to planting much as of yet. You can see there are some things that have happened. This was the umbrella planter, which the, it, it looked really nice but uh, I had forgotten one very important detail about the umbrella planter. It's that everything has to be a low growing plant because if it's not, you can't crank the handle to adjust the umbrella. You can't put the umbrella up and down if you can't get in there and turn it. So the daffodils, are, they're not looking too hot. They were done blooming anyways, so it's okay. Need to give them a cut back. I think if I leave, probably two thirds to half of the foliage on them. If I do that, they should be just fine to rebuild their bulb, re-strengthen it through the growing season and over winter and come back next year. Those will all be going into the ground. What I always do, I buy tete a -tets, I put them in planters in the springtime, then I toss them somewhere in the landscape and then I'm surprised by them when they come back in the spring. This is why there will always have to be succulents in this container, just short little tiny things. Sempervivums, echeverias, that sort of thing. Cause if not, you can't, you need to be able to put the umbrella up and down, right? Yeah, okay, so there, there we go. Start off with something green, now let's switch over to some of the brown stuff. Talk about what happened. Yes, that is a Christmas decoration. I haven't put it away yet because it looks so beautiful at nighttime and it lights the space up really well, but I am, I'm gonna go ahead and probably put it away this weekend. Just need to clear out a spot for it in the attic. It's definitely time now. You couldn't really tell when the bamboo was more full that those were ornaments. They just kind of at nighttime looked like big beautiful lit up balls, but now it's more evident since there's not much foliage around them anymore. So yeah, that bamboo, that's the way that looks is gonna be the theme of basically the entire garden for this tour. It got really cold back in December across the majority of the country. Most of y'all probably remember, probably had it worse than we did here in St. Louis. Had extreme negative temperatures below zero for days on end. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Put them watered, trying to keep those canes alive as long as they stay alive and hopefully they'll reflush. At least that's what I've been told. I have never had luck with bamboo reflushing before. So y'all will have to let me know. People have told me that it will do that, but any other time I've grown bamboo, if it yellows out in the winter time, and that's pretty much it for those canes and have to wait for new ones to emerge. And if that's the case, they gotta go because I don't, I'm not enjoying sitting out here and looking at brown. I don't like it. So unless these containers here with the bamboo and them put up some really nice looking growth, like some really, you can tell when they come up, when they start to emerge, you can tell if they're going to be really big, thick bamboo canes. And if it's looking like they're just gonna be little wimpy ones like they already have, I don't see myself wanting to keep those there anymore. It's been a fun few years. I have other plans for them and I can be getting rid of them, just doing something else in this spot. Always lots of options. Time will tell. We will see the, what, one of the, what, it's just, this windmill palm had <laughs> some pretty bad uh, cold damage and it's coming out of it, but that's why it looks like this. I believe it was between 10 and 15 when I moved this one inside and I've left my windmill palms out at 10 degrees all many, many, many occasions. In fact, this one right here, this one, didn't bring this one inside till it got down to five. And I have another one that looks just like it and it did just fine. But that wasn't the case for this one or one of the others. They're being treated, well, this one's done. It was being treated with a fungicide. Like I said, new growth coming out the middle. So in a matter of weeks, 
more like a couple months, that'll flush back out and start looking really good again. And this one over here, same thing. But it's all right, they're not dead. That's all I care about. Okay, if there's a leaf blower or a weed whacker going, and then there'll be more things going. I know my neighbors, once they start, they don't stop. We just, if it gets loud, we're just gonna accept it. It's okay, there's joys of being outdoors. There's noise sometimes. The, back to the bamboo. I love it, I hope it comes back. It was never a popular plant as far as the channel's concerned. Any other year I would plant these up and people would really like them when I put the bamboo in these containers. That's when the compliments stopped rolling in. And that's okay. Sometimes you have to make the choice of like, well, this is my yard, it's where I spend my time, I have to do what I want. And I just love bamboo. It's so graceful and calming. I love the way it moves in the wind and it keeps the dog occupied. Turbo, don't eat that. That's, that's got too much fiber for you, buddy. Not a panda bear, leave that alone. Don't need to deal with a backed up dog. That's why you're not allowed to chew on the coconuts, right? Because then you have to give you laxatives. That's no fun. Fatsia japonica. I've had this one for a long time. Has some cold damage. That's just going to be the case for most things out here. This one I'd say is ready for a repot. Been outside for a pretty long time. I like the fatsias and the windmill palms and the akubas because I can have them out from basically, sometimes mid-February and on. Back to the bamboo. It's gonna be a lot of back and forth here. Normally I like walk around and plan out the garden tours. I'm not, we're not doing that this time. Clearly, just walking and going with the flow. So the whole point of these two planters right here is one, I just, I like having a couple of planters here. There'll be a big palm tree in between them in a couple of months, but they add a lot of privacy. I don't like the way the fence opens up to this wall here and there's children that run around and play, which is fine. I'm glad kids are outside playing and having a good time, but privacy is nice. Last year, I transplanted a whole bunch of euonymus from the back of a berm that has laurels on it and moved them over here with the plan being well, these are evergreen and these are going to fill this space in. Can you, well, look how that turned out. It was like negative six. I think there was a night of negative 13. And I mean, what this is what you get. The stems are still nice and green, a gentle trim around the tops. I'm going to be giving everything holly tone. Gonna to be showing some more things that have damage. Gonna be doing the same thing with those. Try and get the soil nice and rich and they should flush back out. There's already some action actually on this one down here. You can see this one starting to put out some new growth. So I'm not concerned, but as far as privacy goes, uh, this admit, that's okay. Oh, hey, remember I talked about how I scatter the tete -tetes around? Don't remember putting those there, but apparently I did at some point. Oh, okay, well now they both have lawn equipment. Maybe I'll give this a few minutes and come back. No, I know them, it's not going to stop anytime soon. We just have to accept it. This is gonna be a very noisy year in the garden. I'll talk about that some more in a minute as well when I get to it. Japanese maple bonsai. This is one of the plants I was the most concerned about with surviving those cold temperatures, but it just started flushing out with buds a couple of days ago. So I am totally relieved by that. In the winter time, I usually take this to a leaf pile and pile leaves around it and then just slowly pull those back when things get more mild. I just wasn't sure if that was going to be enough for it. Looking like it was. I think every single branch on here is starting to push out. This also means that it's time for me to prune this. Don't want to wait too long. Done that before and then I always end up regretting it. Need to give this a nice big cut back. Okay and now for the really sad part. This has me absolutely, I don't want to say devastated, that's dramatic, but I'm pretty bummed about the laurel hedge. The laurel hedge has always been one of my favorite parts of the garden, not always, but the last few years, ever since I planted it. And every spring I get more and more excited about it because it flushes out with some new growth and has flowers on it and provides a ton of privacy. It opens up to the back of four houses back here that all look down into this yard. I'm not, not thrilled about how these are looking. They do look better. I've been getting some of the brown out of them. I'm just going to have to get some more foliage out, keep the live wood, cut out the dead wood and just, fertilize, right? Just have to fertilize and fertilize again with the holly tone going down in here. Just got to take really good care of these, like primo, optimal care of them, get them to flush back out and get them looking nice again this year. Uh, there is one down here on the other end that I think, actually there might be two of them, that I think, yeah, these two right here, I'm thinking those are probably, I'm just going to 
those are gonna go. They aren't that big anyways. I think the best option with those is just to replant because I've gone in and messed with them. There's not a lot of live wood left in them. So I would rather just get them out of here. I'll cut them back to whatever's alive and maybe stick them somewhere else, but I want this to be a nice looking hedge right here. That's, well, that's not gonna work with those right there. Those are going to have to be replaced. Not the end of the world. The pedicets, Japonicus, they just started coming up. Well, actually they didn't. These started to come up a pretty long time ago, but March got pretty chilly. It started off nice and warm and then it was just kind of cold and gloomy. So uh, plants were flowering in February, which isn't normal. It was a very unusually warm winter. And the closer we actually got to real spring, things cooled off. So they started to push up and then just chilled and hung out. This is all good to see though. So last year I pulled a lot of these up so that I could do a row of impatiens in the front of this berm. I wasn't sure if I would like it or not, but thought I'd give it a try. And there's some concern expressed from people about getting rid of all of them. And I, I was like, no, no, trust me, they will come back and they will come back with a vengeance. And they did. So again, this year I will just clear them out from the front. They're very easy to pull. And I leave them on the backside and up in the middle and they come up and over the impatiens and all good there. Lots of color, not much to look at yet, but there will be very soon. Ugh, it's so nice just to be out here and see some green in the garden, S some life amongst all the nasty brown, dry, crusty stuff. And I told you to stay out of the pool. I was gonna take him to the park and go on a hike and go to the dog park. We were gonna have a whole bunch of turbo time and Toby time. The other dog, he's inside sleeping right now, but your ass is all wet now. That's fine, he's a lab. He'll dry off the hydrangea trees. They're starting to butt out. There's a good amount of dead growth and those, I'm still pretty surprised that they're even alive because that was a lot of cold for them to endure in pots. I didn't try and protect them. Those pots are too big. They're too heavy. I figured when it's that cold outside, just trying to move them to me meant more of a risk of breaking the pottery and the pottery to me is much more important than the plants. I mean, the plants are what makes the pottery I, much more expensive and harder to replace the pots than the plants. That's what I should have said. They don't sell those anymore. So if one of them gets broken beyond repair, then I get to buy four new pots for the pool. And that's assuming I can even find some that are the right size and ones that I would like. I don't want to have to do that. So that's that was the case with those. They're okay. At least I think they are up here on the hill. Two honeysuckles are still up there on each side of those steps. I'm going to dig those up and move them. You may notice there's a lot more sun over here. And I'm trying to figure out how to film this without kind of being rude and invasive to my neighbors. Okay, well, the neighbors who live up there, I'm not going to show their whole house, even though it's kind of hard not to because they they were cut out the, their entire landscaping. So if you, you know me and you know my channel, I spent a lot of time planting things for privacy and they cut it all out. Everything is gone, the, which there's some nice things about that. There was a birch tree up there that just was the messiest tree I've ever been around in my entire life. I scooped those leaves out of the pool every single day during the summertime. So this is a river birch and it just, <laughs> that's what they tend to do here during the summer. Not a big deal if you have them in your lawn. Not something you normally notice, but when you live downhill from the ever pool, you notice. And they're beautiful trees though. I love birch trees, but it just, the location, wasn't ideal. And uh, there were lots of viburnums up there as well that added privacy. Those are all gone now. So it's just looking right like they can probably see me sitting here on my glider talking to my camera like a weirdo right now. But yeah, so the honeysuckles up there, those are going to go. There's a lot more sun up there now that those trees are gone. Like this has opened up a lot of opportunity for getting more plants over on the side of the yard that like more sun. I've, as the trees have grown over the years, I've had to change how I've grown things. I had plants ordered and picked out to actually plant a hedge that goes from like basically right here all the way down the other side of the fence, but they were all shade loving shrubs. So I'm having to change that out because now there's a lot more sun up there, which is fine. That's actually a good thing. It's easier to get fast growing shrubs for sun than for shade. Not a big deal there. But uh, the honeysuckle, getting back to it, I swear I'm gonna get to that point. It's coming out. It's going to go over here on each side of that fence. I, I already planted a couple little ones over there, so I might put one on this side of the fence and then do one on a drain spout over there by the window. And then I'm thinking uh, mountain, ooh, mountain, green mountain, green tower. 
green tower boxwoods on each side of those steps. They're evergreen, they aren't super expensive, and they grow very fast for boxwoods, and they're super hardy. So that'll add some privacy. It's a nice formal look. That spot does lend itself to some formality. And the star of the show to me is whatever I put in those blue planters right there. It's not what's in the ground. That ground up there is really hard to dig and it's all drainage, gravel and pipes and whatnot. So not a big deal moving some things around up there. I think that'll be for the best. So cool, now we have an airplane. Dune grass coming up, the blue dune grass. I love that stuff. Don't plant it if you're not willing to let it just take over because that's what it does. The bananas. Another thing to be concerned about with those extreme colds, although I really, with the bananas, I wasn't that worried. They're just baju bananas. Even if they had not come back, they're starting to come back. I can see some growth in there. But if they were completely dead, you just get a couple new ones. They grow fast, they're tough. You can see that there is growth starting to emerge from down in there. It's hard to see, just trust me, it's there. But depending on what comes back from this spot, I'd mentioned last year, and I'm pretty sure I'm sticking with this plan. I have a banana clump here and one over there. I'll try and have footage rolling over some over here by the gate and then some of that corner over there. It looks great, but they do put out so much shade. That does hinder how much I can do with other plants underneath them. These are pretty narrow beds. So I was thinking this year that I'm either going to do away with this clump right here or just get rid of the part that comes up from this side. It had started to naturally form into two separate clumps on its own from years like they flower and then those mothers die off and then the pups come up and those pups kind of go out in their own way so it was already starting to look like two separate clumps which also bothered me so I may leave the one clump there and I have some other plants on order that I'll, I should be able to pick up from the nursery here hopefully by the end of the month that I'm excited about I've grown them here before on the channel but not in many 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 years because I didn't have the sun but this spot gets the sun. So they should do well. There's the black bamboo. It's not looking great. I'm hoping that this will put up a good amount of growth further back in the garden this year because I want to get rid of this clump that's in the front because it, should, it shouldn't be there. I didn't plant it there. This was originally planted much further away and we had a bad winter that killed all of it off except for this one clump. I'm gonna get rid of it. This has now become the new mother plant that would get the rest of the bamboo going but it needs to get back to where it used to grow just perfectly where I wanted it to but you know it's plants they're going to do what they want where they want hopefully it'll put up some new growth and start pushing some stuff up in the back of the garden if not it's coming up anyways it's going to go into a container because I don't like having it in the front of that bed it's got to go little gem magnolia it has some winter damage on it but it's really not too bad considering how cold it got the magnolias they're just now starting to show their damage they tend to take a while at least that's been my experience. The evergreen magnolias, they can look totally fine. And then right around mid-March into mid-April is when I start to see the browning and things start to fall off. And that's partially just from the drying winds and the things of spring, but there's plenty of rain right now. So, and it's just shedding off their old leaves. It's doing that right now, but it's alive. That's the main thing. Little gem, technically a zone seven. Plenty of people are growing them in zone six. This is a sheltered area where I can usually grow zone seven plants, like the sable miners down here. These, they weren't looking good, but they are looking better. They're pushing up some new growth. You can see I still have Christmas lights down in there from when I was protecting them during that Arctic blast back in December. I hadn't taken those lights up because I kept thinking, like, oh, I might have to turn them back on, but I would imagine hopefully we're well past dealing with negative temperatures. I don't go to extremes for the sable miners until we're going to drop below zero degrees. Uh, this was disappointing, to say the least, that they had this much dieback, but I'm really just happy that they're alive, because getting new ones at the size of where these are would be pretty difficult and very expensive. The clump closest to the house, no surprise, it's looking the absolute best. Still has some stuff in here that I need to trim out, but it's, not like, it's already pushing out new growth. There's a very warm patch right here, and I think I should probably do something more special with it, because... I have good luck with plants that are sensitive over here. Like you can see back here, you see that? You know what that is? That little green thing? That is a hedicium. This whole spot's planted up with hedicium flaming torches. A plant that has always returned for me, no matter how bad the winter is, as long as they get some mulch on them, they've always come back. So I wasn't that concerned about them, but this whole area has those in there. And banana cannas, the banana cannas I think probably will not have as good of a fate as the Hedicheums. Cannas, I've noticed they tend to rot more easily than the gingers do. Gingers are pretty dang 
cold tardy. And look at that. There's another one coming up right there. Or is that even, I didn't, I don't think I had a ginger planted, did I? I'm wondering if, is that a ginger or would that be a banana canna? Uh, that's a ginger. Doesn't want to focus, but just trust me. That's good. So at least two of the four gingers that are over here are coming up. There's also a Hidichium Elizabeth in here, which I really hope survived. I, I don't know, it seems too early to tell. I thought I saw some green over there. I don't think I did. That one is very similar to the Flaming Torch, but it has a nice pink flower on it. And I got those from Aloha Tropicals, which send their plants teeny, teeny tiny. So I had to grow it out in a pot for a couple of years before I could get it in the ground. It survived one winter in the ground. Hopefully it'll survive another. There's also needle palms back there. They're covered in mulch, not much to see with them. Okay, the corner banana clump, no action with it yet, but the crinum at least, they're starting to do that weird, creepy spring resurrection thing they do where they like molt off this slimy, crusty junk that forms around the plants. Some of it does look rotten, but I almost guarantee you if I go in there and give this a cutback, which I will do, that that will reveal some nice new growth on the inside. Also, a relief. Because those, I mean, they're a zone six, but that cold we had was just so extreme. I wasn't expecting a lot of these plants to be around. Needle palm has some damage, but not that much, considering I'm pretty sure all I did with this one was throw a frost cloth over it. I didn't have any lights on it or anything. Now my two larger sable miners, uh, they're not dead, so that's good but they're no longer my larger sable miners. They're just, just, you know, crusty looking palm leaves at this point. They'll grow. They're not dead. There hasn't been any spear pull. You can see where they are pushing out new growth from the inside. And that's what I want to see with those. So that's all good news there. Just going to be well so they look nice again. Ostrich ferns, those are starting to come up and look nice. Alliums that I planted a couple years ago didn't do anything last year. They're kind of getting ready to put up some flowers. Another plane. No action out of the main ginger clump. The, this is the ginger clump where if this doesn't come back, I will be very, very disappointed. I'll be so sad because this, to me, this whole spot right here, having that ginger come up through the garden and flower. It's one of my favorite parts of summer is this ginger. Well, hopefully it's alive in there. I don't know, it is soon to tell. The ones around the corner, that's like a little oven. So they get more warmth than the spot over here. So just, usually these are about two to three weeks behind that spot over there. So still time, hopefully there'll be some action under there. The Temple of Bloom, the Seven Sun shrub. I had been thinking about maybe not keeping this here. I planted it a couple of years ago and I just, I wasn't crazy about it. I didn't think that the flowers were anywhere near as dramatic and beautiful as how they had been described. And to me, it's like, well, this is an important spot where I want something that I'll really like, but it flushes out early and that is very nice. Most of the other shrubs, they're not flushing out yet. So I think it might get to stay for that alone because it comes out of dormancy earlier than pretty much everything else I had back here. And it flowers later in the year. So you, as it gets bigger, I think that I will be more impressed with the blooms. I'm gonna give it a few more years. I need to do some pruning and pruning. I need to do some pruning on it because I want it to have a nice vase shape to it. Uh, the Monfire peach trees. Uh, they didn't do a ton of flowering because the weather was so wacky, but they still have some buds on them. I'm not expecting much of a peach set out of these this year, but they're not really one that you'd eat. You could. I think they're better for like canning and jarring right? I don't think it's the most delicious type of peach, but these just, they're just nice looking trees. They have the nice red foliage. Those go in the driveway on each side of that gate during the summertime. For the spring, they get to come out here, hang out by the pool, get them planted up with lots of little spring colorful things. The daffodils are going out of bloom. Hyacinths are just now getting moving. Tulips are starting to bud. Don't know if you can see it. The sun's in my face. Try that from over here. Tulips. They're starting to put up their buds. The hyacinths, you can see they're doing their thing. They're holding their flowers down pretty low, which I'm not shocked about. That can happen when you transplant hyacinths. Sometimes it throws them off and they get pretty wacky. Pansies, they're okay. They have some cold damage on them. These two containers right here, those have spring grove arborvitaes in them. Those were purchased last fall for some nice extra color out here during the winter time. Some 
life in the garden when everything else is all dormant and dead looking. And that was with the intention of those going, you can't see it right now, but on over here by the hot tub. I had to turn the hot tub around. This was broken for a long time. It got moved out into the landscape, got fixed and rotated so that there would be more access to the electrical and to the controls. But now I can't put those where I wanted them to go. But there are plenty of other options. I could put them on each side of the steps like I talked about where I was going to put the tower, mountain tower boxwoods, but I don't really want to do that with them. This whole area over here, it's a mess and it's staying that way until I'm ready to film the process of doing it over, but I'm going to gut this entire area and I have a whole bunch of really nice narrow landscape rock that I'm going to use to build some little walls and turn this into a little tortoise garden for the tortoise so he can hang out out here all summer long. And I'm thinking about maybe moving the red glider that's down there. Pretty hard to see, yeah, but I'm thinking about moving that either over here. I've talked about it before, so I'm probably doing it either over here or maybe over here into this area for the tortoise garden. That's large just because I think Colby would enjoy running around underneath it and it has some shade and the spot gets pretty sunny. That might be nice. I'd like to get these things out of the way so that I can get back to working up there in that native garden. Well, mostly native. More of a pollinator garden than native garden, but I have a lot of natives up there that need to be replanted. There are a couple of hydrangeas, no, three. Three macrophylla hydrangeas up there that there's nothing left on them. Not surprising with that kind of cold that we had. I'm going to probably dig those up and get rid of them. I don't think that a very exposed location like this is the smartest location for a hydrangea that needs to bloom on old wood. And I already have some new ones on order, some blue jangles, which will bloom on old and new wood. And they'll look really nice up there. So that's the plan with that area. Those trellises are going to go and I have like a pot covering up some electrical stuff that I can get rid of that doesn't need to be there anymore. And then uh, we'll talk about it when it's time, but this whole area right here, this, all this, it's a lot of mess. It's all old pots and storage, clearing it all out. Gonna open the whole space up. I think the tortoise will enjoy that too. I should probably throw the iguana over here too, right? Not throw, we're not throwing lizards around here. You know what I mean? Get the iguana and the tortoise, they can hang out. Not together, but have the iguana and That's enough, I've talked enough. My brain stopped working. And you know, the spring groves, I might be able to pop those up there in place of that macro because those stay more narrow and they don't get super tall. Those would fill in that spot and in several years hide that deck. I'd rather start with something bigger. I'm more of an instant gratification kind of guy. I don't want to wait five years for them to get big enough to hide the neighbor's deck. Where this big macro is right there with the bananas I talked about digging up if that even needs to be done because I don't know if that clump closest to the edge of the garden bed survived the winter but if it did that would be a good spot for it. No, not a pollinator plant, but just I think it'd be fun to see banana fronds up there on the hill. Fronds, banana leaves blowing around in the wind. I think it'd be nice. The only other big, I don't know, and what if as far as damage goes out here is the mimosa tree. And it is just way too soon to tell what's going on with that tree. I don't, can you even see it? The sun is right in my eyes. It's over there. It's right above that glider. They don't usually push out until things have been consistently warm for a while. I probably won't know what's going on with that plant. I wouldn't be surprised, maybe not until May. Hopefully it's alive. That was a lot of cold for it. We will see. But let's end on a more happy note. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? The spring hanging basket, the dianthus, tetatets, alyssum, and mountain rock crest. It smells absolutely divine. I have been loving seeing this through the window here and smelling the flowers in the morning the breeze comes in oh yeah and i moved the mule palms outside uh and then we had like two days of absolutely horrible horrible storms so this is what they look like now it's fine you know i think they needed a rejuvenation prune anyways push out new growth sand up the fertilizing at least they survived it was a very long winter. Longest winter I can remember. I've never had to, I say this all the time. I'm sure I'm a broken record. Never had to move the plants inside in early October before. So this will be the longest I've ever kept plants inside ever. So, you know, once those were in, they stayed in. I didn't move them back out because the weather had been so erratic. I tend to only bring them in for a few weeks. I let them stay inside for a long time because one of them had crown rock, which has pushed out and is Finally, looking a lot better, have the new growth in there, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. But so with that crown rot on there, I was gonna have to cut all that foliage off anyways and let them get their acts together. Yeah, 
It got cold. Very cold. And what was weird with those mule palms is that I moved them in before it got down to 15. And I have left those mule palms out. You've seen it on the channel before if you've been watching for many years. It's not unusual for me to leave them out till it gets down to like 13. I think I've even let them drop to 10 before. And they would have some damage, some burn on them, but I've never had spear pull on them ever, any crown rot. So that was surprising. But that this cold, you know, that December cold, it just, it hit different. It had a lot of moisture with it, lots of ice, and that's just, well, that's what you get when you throw all those things together. What would we think about Louisias in here? Louisias, Louisia, however you want to say it. Probably a waste of money because, well, I will want to replant this in probably a month with succulents or something like that. So I, I don't need to redo this just yet. Cutback would be fine. Actually, I already have the Echeverias ready to put in here. And Echeverias are pretty cold hardy. Like I leave my Echeverias, the ones that I throw into annual containers out here. They don't usually die back until like mid-January, depending on the cold. But when we have dips into the 20s, they're normally unbothered by it. When I say Echeveria, I'm referring to the Neon Breakers. That one I've had good luck with, with the cold and the Lola. Those two specifically, Echeverias, that's a huge, 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 huge group of plants. I could be referring to a lot of different things with that. Anyway, okay, that's all. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below what's going on in your gardens. I'm excited about this year. This is just the beginning stages of basically playing catch up, letting everybody know what the heck happened out here. And okay, now we have a tornado siren. Just airplanes, tornado sirens, and leaf blowers. This is fun. It's okay, you're fine. <laughs> what is that turbo? I don't know how well the microphone picks that up. I am not a fan of the creepy voice that comes over the intercom after the sirens go off. It's very apocalyptic and creepy. Although it is always nice to know when it's just a test. You'd think Turbo would be used to it by now. As I was saying, comment down below. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Hopefully spring is sh starting to do its thing and people are able to get outside and enjoy the fresh air. I know it's still early for a lot of people who are up further north, things are just now get into the swing here. I'm ready to get planting. I want to get my hands dirty and start plopping shrubs in the ground so bad. It'll probably be a couple months though. There's still a lot to do to get prepared, like replan an entire garden area over here now that my neighbors removed all their shrubbery. But that's fun. I'm looking forward to doing that. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. It, it, they're putting in a pool. I said I was going to mention the thing about the noise. I was like, it's going to be a noisy year. That's the neighbors up there. They're putting in a pool. I'm very excited for them. That's why they cleared their landscaping. I don't remember if I mentioned that or not. I just know that I said it was going to be noisy. And then I said my neighbors cut down all their landscaping. But don't, if I didn't fill in, then well, that's what's going on there.